Hey everyone, for once my shirt actually matches today's topic and we are talking about five toad species that make good pets. Now really, really quick, we all know about, about amphibians, right? Frogs and toads. Basically the difference is, is that for the most part, toads can live much longer without water for longer periods of time because of their skin texture. There are other species of frogs that are sometimes called toads, but in this case, what we are talking about are all five different animals that belong to the genus Bufunidae, which is basically bufo, that is Latin for the toads. This is true toads. So that's out of the way, let's get right into the list. And we're starting off strong with obviously the best pet toad out there, and that is Hypnotoad. No, I'm just really kidding. What we're actually starting off with is actually a really good choice, and that is the Woodhouse Toad. The Woodhouse Toad is native to North America. It's named after American naturalist Samuel Washington Woodhouse. They actually have a really huge range spanning from Washington to Montana all the way south down to Mexico. Basically a big chunk of the middle of America. These guys are distinguished by the white line that grows across the back of adult mature animals, as well as their really cool little warty speckles that can vary in colors from shades of gray to brown to kind of a greenish color. They're a medium-ish sized toad that can get between four to five inches long, basically from snout to butt. So it's a decent sized little animal. It would be generally sometimes classified, generally sometimes classified as a plains type toad, which usually means that a lot of the times these guys begin their life stages in vernal ponds. Vernal ponds are essentially temporary. They usually amass and be, become created during heavy spring and early summer rains. They last for a while and then eventually they dry up. Vernal, spring, ponds, you get what I mean, right? So essentially, the Woodhouse Toad lays its eggs, they hatch into the little tadpoles, and then over the period of five to eight weeks, they metamorphize into little toadlets, and then they go out, continue to grow to adult size, and then to restart the cycle again the next year in the new vernal ponds. They're really, really cool species of toad. They're native to, like I said, a big chunk of North America. And a really cool kind of tidbit about these guys is that like males, like most species of toads and frogs, they vocalize quite a bit, but they'll actually vocalize even when you try to pick them up and handling. So if you ever go out herping and you're looking for woodhouse toads, you'll know pretty quickly if you end up with a male or a female on whether or not they start screaming Next up, at you. we have the largest species of toad and definitely the most infamous. That is the marine toad or the cane toad. And we've all probably have heard about these guys at this point. I've even talked about them a number of times talking about both invasive species and on our Halloween spectacular list. I'll try to remember to put the link to that playlist right here to check that out. Now these guys do originate from Northern South America and Central America. There's actually two different species of toads that are sometimes classified as cane toad. And I will try to remember to throw them both right here. Like I said, they're both sometimes classified as cane toads. It mostly has to do with the region where they are from. Now, as I said before, these guys do originate from South America and Central America. They are a large toad averaging four to seven inches, but we said they're the largest for a reason. They can exceed lengths, nose to butt, of over 10 inches. That is a huge, huge amphibian. And here's the part where they were infamous. So a long time ago, when people were starting to colonize all across the world, and they were starting up mostly sugarcane plantations, they decided to import cane toads as kind of a natural pesticide to eat up insects and even small mammals because cane toads will eat anything as a natural pesticide, pesticide essentially, or as a natural pest deterrent. Unfortunately, they are so good at what they do, they outcompeted all of the natural animals and expanded past the natural ecosystems, and now they're invasive all across the world. Obviously most famous in, in Australia, they're also in multiple islands along French Polynesia, also in places like uh, parts of Mexico, Texas, and even Florida. And when I said that they do eat anything, I mean they eat anything. They eat every single type of invertebrate essentially out there. They will eat fish, they will eat rodents, they will eat small reptiles, smaller cane toads, small birds. They are exceedingly good at what they do. They do make decent 
pets, but something to think about, not only with the cane toad, but really every single type of toad out there, not even just the ones on this list. Bufotoxin is something that is present in almost every single species of toad. Those two huge glands that you see on the back of both males and females, from small toadlets to mature adults, those contain bufotoxins. Those can actually cause paralysis and heart failure in adults in large quantities. They're also the thing that has become famous for licking toads, depending on the different species. I do not recommend this whatsoever. So regardless of what species of toad that you do decide to bring home, even though the bufotoxin is excreted just from there, they're really good at cleaning themselves and it can be put all over their skin, as well as despite the fact that toads do have much less permeable skin than many species of frogs, it still is wise to wear gloves and keep handling to a minimum two toads because their skin is, at least to a, a fair degree, fairly delicate. Now, as I did say, the cane toads do make good pets. However, make sure you want to give them plenty of space, plenty of respect, and make sure if you can, try to find a cane toad that wasn't brought into the country illegally. Next up, we have another species of large tropical South American toad, but contrasts quite a bit to the cane toad, and that is the smooth-sided toad. It's another big, big toad. They can average seven-ish inches long from nose to butt, and they probably call it the smooth side. Despite my best efforts, I couldn't figure out exactly why they call them that. It probably is the fact that as far as toads go, they don't have a lot of those warts or those lumps on them. Although again, they do have those big bufo glands back there that excrete the bufo toxin. They are really cool. They do a little bit more of like a high walk, like some of the walking frogs or walking toads. They don't hop quite as much. They do more of a lot of a walking. Their actual color can vary a fair bit, Generally, the top part of their bodies are kind of like a creamish color to almost a reddish or orangey brown, and then their legs and underside are typically much darker. They're really cool. Like most species of toads, they will eat essentially anything that they can fit in their mouths. And unlike a lot of the other more temperate species or toads that are found much further away from the equator, or even the cane toad that has been shown to be very versatile, these guys do really need much higher ambient humidity. So if you want to decide to take a smooth-sided toad home, make sure that you want to kind of treat it like a ball python, where you want to give it plenty of deep, thick substrate that they can bury down and hide into under leaf litter and stuff. And that doesn't say that you, none of the toads on this list, you also shouldn't do that. I'm just talking about them in general. But make sure you do want to give them plenty of deep substrate that you can provide plenty of ambient humidity, different humidity of high and low and cool basking spots and hides. But they do make really cool and inanimate pets that once they get comfortable are fairly bold and active especially during the later parts of the evening into early night next up is another species of toad from north america and this is the fowler's toad now this one you may have heard at least on or maybe even seen on some kind of like wholesaler tables and dealers at reptile expos now this is a really cool pretty small species of toad they're found across a good portion of the eastern part of the United States, although not so much in Florida and definitely not really a whole lot above kind of the New Hampshire, Vermont area, so not really seen them too much in Maine. They're generally only about two to four inches long, so even smaller than that woodhouse toad that we very first talked about, and they do vary in color. They're essentially a differentiating and varying mix of a creamish white, olive, and brown, even a little bit of red in there, and then they often have a lot of really cool dark black spots and their bellies are almost always entirely white on the underbelly, sorry. Now, these guys are just truckers of the toad world. These guys have survived so much harm and ecological stress, especially compared to plenty of other species of amphibians. Obviously, they are affected by chytrid fungus like every species of amphibian out there. But these guys have survived deforestation, they've survived jet fuel, jet fuel pollution, they've survived DDT poison in areas where it was most affected across the entire country. They have survived so, so much. Basically, the only thing that can take these little tanks out is the eastern hognose, which is saying something because the eastern hognose are absolutely hilarious little drama queens, but they specialize in eating toads and they really like to get down on the Fowler's toads. Now these guys are really cool. 
they are native to do a lot of different states so you might want to look at to see what the laws are where you live about keeping native wildlife and that goes with every species of local wildlife out there you always want to make sure we're keeping them ethically and legally but they do do very well in captivity they're mostly nocturnal like most species of toad so you'll see them most active during the day and night they need not huge basking spots and they do really well with plenty of layers and thick deep substrate for them to burrow down and hide under during the middle of the day or when they're feeling a little bit uncomfortable. All right, and last on the list, and this one is actually gonna come with a bit of an asterisk, but as you've probably learned from a lot of my lists, they're not necessarily the best choices or the easiest choices, they're just what I think are good choices and sometimes those even come with a really good story. And that's exactly what number five on this list today is. This is the Colorado River Toad. The Colorado River Toad is North America's largest species of toad. They average five to seven inches, nose to butt, but they can exceed that getting sometimes closer to eight and a half to nine inches. They have relatively very smooth skin for toads that can vary in color from kind of like a grayish green to almost like a ruddy greenish earth color, but they're very noted for their more smooth skin and their bright golden eyes. The other thing that really distinguishes the Colorado River Toad, in addition to those two big glands that I've mentioned probably three times at this point, they also have two little white glands at the corners of their mouths. Those also excrete toxins. And that is where the Colorado, the Colorado River Toad kind of gets its reputation. These guys are the number one toad, at least in recent history, that are 100% synonymous with the toad licking and tripping on toads. Now, this is the reason why this is coming with that asterisk. Because of this reason and because of where they live, they live in a very small range at the very, very southwestern part of the United States in New Mexico, Arizona, and this much into California, although now it's becoming very debated because of how rare they're becoming in the northern part of Mexico. And they're becoming rare because people are illegally poaching them from the wild that for the most part, for the longest time, was for the pet trade, but also because of previously mentioned uh, social unnicety. Now, these guys, because of that, a lot of places don't allow you to keep them. It varies from state to state. You'll have to check in with that. That's why a lot of these toad species become a little bit more of an out there uncommon pet versus many of the frog species. Number one, there's less of them. And number two, because a lot of them are native to, at least here in the United States, that's where most of you guys are watching this. Uh, they are native to a big chunk of those states. There's native habitat, uh, native wildlife issues with that. But the Colorado River toad has essentially become something of an almost illegally trafficked substance. There's even different people in time that have sat there and essentially farmed their toxins, scraping that off, drying them up and smoking it. It's absolutely insane. And so because of that, we really don't like a whole lot of people keeping them. However, they have been captively bred. And if you do manage to find a, a case of a captively bred Colorado River Toad, they do make an excellent pet. Again, however, it's very unlikely, especially when even mainstream people such as Mike Tyson, Joe Rogan, Chelsea Handler, which may or may not actually have to speak with the type of people those guys are, uh, that they have made it more infamous, thus making it even more wanting to illegally take them out of the wild. So again, if you have the ability to find and keep a captive born Colorado River toad, they do make excellent pet reptile or excellent pet herpetiles or amphibians. The really cool thing about these guys that I probably shouldn't have mentioned before this whole asterisk thing is that all species of toads have the ability to absorb water through their skin, just like all frogs and amphibians. However, with toads, it's almost exclusively through a portion of their skin on their stomachs. And the Colorado River toad has been noted to do it exceptionally often, probably because of their smoother skin. So in these very dry desert, rocky areas where they live in in the world, when it does rain, they will absolutely sit there and soak up all of that moisture and humidity very rapidly and efficiently through their stomachs. Hopefully you all enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for sticking me with this one. I don't know nearly as much about toads, so I thought this was really fun and researching this one. So hopefully you enjoyed this too. If you can, please like and subscribe, hit the bell notification. Check out my playlist of other top five videos right here. I have a whole bunch of them on there. It helps my click through because right now YouTube really isn't pushing my stuff to new viewers. So if you can, 
Please share it with all of your friends, family, people you think might be interesting. Hope you're having a great day. And always remember, all hail Hypnotoad.